Good morning, panelists, students, parents, and other participants. Indian School of Commerce welcomes you to our seventh webinar series of the academic year 21-22 on the topic Future Ready Accountants on this knowledge sharing platform. Indian School of Commerce is an initiative of ISDC, International Skill Development Corporation, a professional education network of institutions and academic partners providing education to over 2 million students worldwide. The Kochi campus of Indian School of Commerce is at the heart of Infopark amidst high-tech infrastructure with free-flowing space complemented with a well-balanced green environment, making learning and working here incomparably inspiring. ISC, Indian School of Commerce, is an approved learning partner of ACCA and CIMA. The integrated global dual bachelor's and master's degree programs in international business and finance offered by ISC are validated by the University of West of Scotland and have been accredited by ACCA and CIMA to avail exemptions towards the professional qualifications. These world-class programs are also accredited by eight other global qualifications and exemptions that offers business relevant first choice qualification to people of application, ability and ambition around the world who seek a rewarding career in accountancy, finance, and management while focusing on the accounting for business skills like key decision-making, management, strategic, and analytical skills. I am Bindu Menon, Manager, Student Relations and Placement at Indian School of Commerce. In the panel today, we have with us Mr. Venugopal V. Menon, Director, Kerala Growth Projects, International Skill Development Corporation, Mr. Thomas Chakku, Head UWS Programs, ISC, Indian School of Commerce. Students from Akochi, Trivandrum, and Bangalore campus have joined with us. Welcome all. Finance functions across many organizations are at a key point in their development. They need to evolve to create the value sought by their customers, both internal and external. What is the nature of this challenge and how prepared are they for it? What is the relevance to attaining this future state of the discussion in which the finance community is engaged? The rapid changes we are seeing today, which cut across technology, data, skills, and culture, create opportunities that go far beyond merely driving greater efficiency and cost savings. We have an opportunity to consider how we could do everything differently and add far greater value to the business. It means challenging everything we do, not just we do those things, but whether we should continue to do some of them at all. To meet the challenge, we need to go back to the basics. Why do we have a finance function? What business need does it fulfill? How is that uh, you know, need to be evolving? What are the changes to be brought in in the current finance skills to bridge the gap? How are the future community of finance professionals to be trained to be future ready and be equipped with knowledge to be a part of the changing world? Today's session will focus on these key points. Over to the speaker slot, please. May now invite Mr. Venugopal V. Menon, Director, Kerala Growth Projects, International Skill Development Corporation, to share his views on the topic, please. Mr. Menon hails from Kochi and has his professional accounting qualification of AICWA and banking qualifications of CAIIB. He has got more than 25 years of managerial experience in banking and education. served as director of academic relations in ISDC, Mr. Menon has moved then to his role of director of Growth Projects ISDC. To Mr. Venugopal V. Menon, sir, please. Okay, thank you. Over to you, sir, please.
Vijay sir, over to you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. So for some time there was a technical stack yes, sir. Uh, in my system, okay. so I could yes, not uh, show my face to the participants. Yes, sir. Yeah. Even though it's not good to look at, even then I can I think it, I can I can take the challenge to show my face. Yes. Sir. Thank you, ma'am, for Thank your you, uh, good words. Uh, in fact, I I must uh, congratulate uh, Bindu, ma'am as well as ISA functionaries to organize uh, this webinar on a contemporary subject, which is being debated uh, among professionals for quite a long time. Accountants, normally when there is any disruption in the uh, present normal situation, uh, every functionary, every professional, or every uh, human being who used to get his livelihood from a profession, used to experience some sort of uncertainty and uh, uh, have their spout some apprehensions in their mind. Accounting professionals, the current uh, scenario feels that they may be replaced by uh, machines or automations or artificial intelligence, whatever it may. Uh, that is why the professionals debate what would be uh, the role of accountants in the future uh, ES. Yes. This has been because the uh, elder generation like we people, in uh, yester years, at least once or twice, uh, there was some apprehension, this computer is coming. So at that time, computer was a new invention or new development in our country. And there were a lot of apprehension as well as discussions. When computerization comes into the field of accounting in a massive manner, what would be the future of accountants like we people? Then later in reality, what we have witnessed is that Computerization or computers have given more opportunities to accountants. And the number of accountants uh, or requirement of accountants in the corporate world has increased uh, many fold. No one has to leave his job because he, there was or the office has been computerized. Only thing is that the accountants must be ready or ready for the future immediate future at least. We cannot foresee what will happen after uh, say 50 years or 20 years. At least for within five years, what will happen we can uh, imagine or uh, the professionals can make us understand what would be the, uh, what would be the development of uh, technology in next one or two years at least. For that, the accountants uh, should be ready to face the challenge and uh, make them uh, or equip them with the skill uh, to uh, come up to the situation or raise to the occasion and find out that they are also skilled and fit to be in a position which is meant for an account. Uh, the percent, percent scenario, uh, what I feel is that there may be automation, there may be even robotics may be introduced into accounting, but everything will be complement to the professional accountants who use their brain as well as intellect for finalizing or uh, finalizing account as, uh, accounts as well as analyzing data. In a future, automation will be there. The uh, signs are there or uh, there are corporates who have already introduced uh, uh, artificial intelligence into their accounting system. And uh, uh, the automation of the accounting system is uh, being done by corporates only in the routine accounting matters only, not for financial analysis or uh, what you call advanced uh, uh, audit purposes or financial reporting. These areas are still kept manually by accountants 
manually means they will be aided by systems, computers, or whatever it may. They this these areas at percent cannot be taken over by uh, robotics or cannot be done by artificial intelligence. But artificial intelligence can be. We are using the artificial intelligence to make the, or the process the data which we feed to them. That means it's a routine matter. That the, the human intelligence is lacking there, so the preference to preference that should be given to any uh, data or an analytical data derived from data processed by the AI is to be decided by the professional accountants. So what the accountants require is they should be professionally qualified accountants with some sort of excellence in technology as well as skill in uh, modern accounting technologies like uh, artificial intelligence, blockchain, uh, cloud accounting. Cloud accounting is massively, massively used now. So it is a, a cloud accounting gives or facilitate uh, massive storage of data, uh, real-time updation of data, as well as uh, speedy processing. So uh, we cannot say that mechanization or uh, automation of accounting cannot be done or uh, it will be, uh, it will jeopardize uh, the profession of, uh, of accountants has no base. It is the accountants who should equip themselves with the skill to use the technology as well as uh, develop their skill to use or utilize the technology as well as modern facilities to speed up their activity and uh, move from the routine accounting procedures, accounting process to analytical job. Big data analysis is an area where accountants should have at least uh, preliminary knowledge. Then only they will be able to work in future. So data analysis, uh, artificial is some sort of, uh, some bit of knowledge in artificial intelligence and uh, skill to use uh, cloud computing. These are required to be acquired by accountants of fourth region. Mere accounting qualification or academic qualification in accounting won't benefit the account accountants or accounting professionals in the coming years because technology is taking over the routine accounting work everywhere. Employers as well as corporates find it more cheaper for them to employ machines to do the routine accounting work and entrust or uh, use professional accountants for more analytical work or to go for a strategic analysis of data which uh, are given to them or amassed by them to give advisory services to the manager. So the position of accountants are moving from uh, some sort of technical uh, craftsman putting figures into uh, desired uh, slots to that of advices and strategic decision makers uh, as part of the management. So this, when we, we foresee the uh, position change of accountants, the accountants must see that they are acquiring the required, required knowledge and skill to fit or make them fit to the positions which corporates, corporates or employers will offer. So accountants or the professional accountants or whoever it may are, who are uh, taking up the accounting job need not have any apprehension as to whether they will be there in the job in the future or not. No, it is uh, as per uh, the dependable uh, the, uh, forecast given by any international bodies, they will be 
on an average there will be 10% uh, accretion or increase of accounting jobs in the corporate world at least for uh, next five years. So the present generation accountants need not have any apprehension. They must do one thing that everyone will do now. Uh, we people, because I was, uh, I've been working in the vertical uh, manual, manual labor type accounting, keeping a large ledger in my front, write everything, everything by a pen, take the uh, ledger balances at the end of the month or the quarter, tally it or uh, total it up, tally with the general ledger. It is a, a cumbersome job. Uh, five, 10 people sit around me or around uh, uh, the person who is coordinating it and finding out lastly, we will get, there's a difference of two rupees. This, for this two rupees, we have to spend two months to find out where it has gone. This is, this is the routine thing in uh, accounting, uh, so corporate accounting does also uh, the same thing in banks. When uh, I have experience when I first uh, took up my articleship in a CFM. It's a very, very renowned CFM from Chennai. Uh, the senior partner uh, asked me to bring the telephone directory from the front office. I took the very, very book telephone directory, Chennai, Chennai Circle. At that time, it was a printed uh, uh, telephone directory. Uh, I took it to him. Then he said, "One gobal, first you occupy a table, uh, tidy all the pages. Whenever you reach, you can uh, total 20 pages in a day. You'll be moved to a uh, chartered accountant where you can go for account. So the job given to me is to total the figures or the numbers of 20 pages of the telephone directly. That was, at that time, that was a uh, uh, method. Manually totaling ledges or uh, whatever thing, manually totaling uh, 5 plus 4, 9 plus 3, 12, uh, such things then. Then uh, after that, we have to tally two digits, 12 plus 13, 25, like that. Uh, we cannot go for single digit. Then only we'll be moved to some sort of accounting work or uh, audit work. Later, what has happened is when I, I uh, after so many years, uh, the computer has come or the calculator has come, everything has come. We, nobody need to have uh, uh, manually manual uh, summation of pages. Uh, in one time, at one time, in point of time, I asked my, I was a, I was a trainer in a bank for some time. I I was uh, taking classes to the newly joined. Uh, Professional offices. And I was, I was uh, just giving them some lectures. Gentlemen, uh, documentation is the heart of the banking. If any any mistake in the documentation is there, documents it won't. We cannot enforce in the court, so bank will lose money. So be careful to make the documents very perfect. Then I was uh, so for each loan. These are the documents. And one of uh, the uh, gentlemen, he I think is uh, personally after, later, he has been uh, um, awarded uh, or he could uh, win yes. And I think he's, uh, he's uh, in a senior position. He was a professional officer in the bank. Then he has said, uh, during our time, when, I, when we people become the manager, so it's not necessary to prepare uh, uh, the documents. We can ask the computer to print it and give it to us. The computer will deliver. Uh, at that time, I could not understand because I was I belong to the elder uh, or older uh, generation. I said, no, you should know what is the document, who, who is signing it, and what you people are giving to the customer to sign. Later, what after five, five six years, what he has uh, forecasted has come true. So in banks now, so just, just give some directions to or instruction to the computer. They will give the documents. Only thing is we have to fill that uh, name, amount, something like that. If, if suppose we feed that, we will get the entire set of documents directly from the computer. So no human being need to keep in their memory what are the documents to be obtained. So suppose I take a vehicle loan. So vehicle loan, uh, the documents will be delivered by 
to the computer. Uh, this is a casting. They are not, they are not uh, directly revenue. We have to we have to feed the data. Then only it will print. Even then, it's not necessary to keep everything in our memory manually to get the documents prepared by a system. So this is this happened in our uh, professional life. This will continue, and the person uh, person generation accountants they are definitely I know that they are they cannot uh, make a summation or do summation of any page of two digit figures ten figures are there they cannot do that. They will go for uh, a computer or say calculator. Or go straight away to Excel and re-enter re all these things and get a summation. So this this is it's not bad. It's good because they can utilize that time for some advanced work. They can go for some management, managerial accounting activities. They can go for some strategic analysis. They can go for some decision or uh, advices to a management which are required for the decision of the management for their uh, development. Or diversification. So the accountants are changing their role from a mere uh, uh, technical person who is uh, playing with figures to a strategic analyst who ana who analyze the figures that are reaching them to find out or uh, make some uh, preferences or preferential decisions for the management in their managerial activity. So this uh, uh, analysis, data analysis, has to uh, be con converted into strategic decisions by the management. So accountants are aiding the management to take decisions. They are not uh, what you call technical people putting figures in the uh, allotted slots. For this, definitely uh, the role of accountants are changing. The accountants should know that they should have this futuristic skill with them to uh, make them capable or competent to uh, occupy these slots. So the things, as I know, this is uh, generally what the percent the corporates use uh, in their accounting are normally uh, cloud computing is there. Blockchain is utilized in certain cases of advanced nature because it's also good for uh, uh, real-time updation of figures and getting uh, we could, we could avoid corruptions or interruptions in the figures. So they should be the, the percent uh, accountant, should have accounting knowledge, should have accounting qualification, should have the skill to uh, skill for analysis, analytical skill. Then they should have some knowledge in you know, the financial technology also. Technology, uh, at least in cloud computing, uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, then only they will be able to win over others during the uh, years to come. Normally, what we know that uh, there's a doctrine that uh, the fittest will only remain. Others will. Uh, thrown out of the race. So let us become, well, let the accountants become fit. Let the accountants become fit with knowledge. Let the accountants become uh, fit with the skill as well as capabilities. So they should uh, acquire first a professional accounting degree, which has got a syllabus, which gives, gives some opportunity to go acquire technology, knowledge or awareness, as well as analytical skill. That is required by the accountants for the few, at least immediate future. Uh, so uh, the apprehension that future is not for accountants is uh, wrong. Future is for accountants only. Accountants are not mere accountants. They are uh, advisors to the management to take strategic decisions through an analytical job. And so uh, a skill in uh, analysis, big data analysis especially, is good for, for uh, good for the accountants to get or elevate their position as uh, chief officer or uh, higher levels. 
So, uh, what my uh, request is that uh, to the students, accounting students, better you complete your uh, accounting qualification. It can be ACCA, it can be CMA, it can be CIMA, or it can be CA, whatever it may. You just evaluate or find out their syllabus, whether it gives opportunity to get some uh, knowledge about financial analysis, knowledge about financial reporting, and give some room to uh, find out or get acquainted, acquainted with cloud computing or uh, such uh, technology aspects. It may not be directly part of, uh, of the syllabus. Even then, you have to go for some training in these technologies to understand what uh, the syllabus says, or syllabus delivers. So it is better uh, to go for this uh, professional qualification, evaluate or uh, on the merit of the syllabus, like uh, ACCA or CMA, do it along that, find out how you will be able to acquire knowledge about cloud computing, artificial intelligence, internet of things, and uh, uh, data science, to a little bit. Then you will be a perfect accountant in the coming years. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Bindu Ma'am, for giving an opportunity for me to interact with the students, not interact, so one way dialogue <laughs> with the students. Anyway, it's a good thing they are organized. The students must appear and they must come out with their uh, doubts, if any, in the latter stage. After I think uh, uh, Thomas Sir is also there to deliver. He is a much more uh, uh, eligible or uh, competent person to deliver a speech on this and make you understand what should be uh, your quality to occupy a future accountant's role. So thank you, thank you all for hearing me uh, during this uh, last few minutes and uh, Bindama for uh, offering me this opportunity. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you, sir. As you rightly said, unprecedented times, but then again, it was there always from generation to generation we have been facing this. But as you rightly said, survival of the fittest is the you know, is a quote to you know move forward or moving forward, and um, you know, as you rightly said, um, an accountant, uh, you know, it should be holistic. Like in our days, we used to have an accountant sitting in one corner of the office, and then you know, just uh, stuck, uh, you know, to his register or whatever it is, not getting involved in any of the activities. Yeah, but exactly. that is not going to, yes, sir, that is definitely not going to happen. And even if we go and interrupt him, he would say, you know, after some time. So it is like he is in his own world, and he doesn't want to interact with others and all these things. That is going to definitely change and then accountant should be really holistic and then an accountant should know what is happening in marketing, what is happening in operations, what is happening in every other department and things such as the uh, otherwise he will be an outcast and he would be thrown out uh, on whatever is you know going to be evolving uh, moving forward. Next thing is that um, I said you were talking about uh, um, you know the technical you know moving from a, being a technical craftsman of putting uh, the figures in the respective column to uh, you know being advisors and strategic uh, decision makers um, uh, again uh, that needs that is basically taking them outside their comfort zone of you know you know trying to or having a regular pattern or you know this monotonous uh, come in the morning and then do some figures you know put some figures in the respective columns and then go back Back in the evening that is not going to happen definitely and that is why you know when you say there's you know, rpas and all these things the current accountants are thinking what is going to be the future wherein the monotonous work or the repetitive work is going to be uh, uh, you know taken um, away by uh, the the automation so as you rightly said but having said all these things sir, still i would say um, uh, the way you started by the 20 pages uh, and then, you know, you know being uh, uh, one an expert in that and then moving to the, it's a gradual process of uh, you know, learning something and moving forward. I think that also should be there or rather uh, um, the current uh, uh, you know, budding finance professional should also take that in your mind because um, when you, when I look at you, it's like uh, uh, whether the system works or whether something, the calculator 
computer is not there or anything i mean you are not dependent on anyone or anything it's like I mean, the work goes on i think sure, that sure. kind of an uh, you know not depending on anyone at the same time um trying to club both the old and the new ways there are a lot of options like i mean as you rightly said this 20 page of a telephone directory it gives a lot of uh, um, what do you call that uh, confidence uh, you know when we do such exercise and then move forward likewise if you have any further tips uh, you may share it with the students so that there are a lot of time you know there is no point in saying there is no time to do all because every day keeping us at half an hour to keep such exercise would definitely do them good um and then uh, when you said that uh, the, the computer would take care of all the documentation we see that in the current uh, uh, proficiency level of the students were in uh, you know um, unable to draft a letter or unable to you know do a proper communication all these things because a foundation definitely should be there and then uh, on a proper foundation let all the changes happen uh, i would say that is how it should be moving forward uh, right sir thank you so much for sharing your years of experience and sharing uh, um, a couple of uh, tips for the students to follow uh, thank you very much sir for the for the you know for the experience welcome ma'am thank you what you said is correct Uh, because there should be some sort of base for everything. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. with a base, uh, as you said it, uh, when we create that base, mm -hmm. our uh, confidence level increases. Yes, sir. So yes. the best thing we should have, or the uh, what you call uh, the essential element in our character, is the confidence level. We okay. should be confident in everything. Then only we will be able to take up more responsibility and win over uh, others. Okay thank you thank you ma'am thank you so much sir thank you now may I invite mr thomas chaku head uws programs isc indian school of commerce to speak on the topic please mr thomas chaku heads the university of west of scotland program at indian school of commerce he is a professional member of fellow chartered accountants association of chartered certified accountants and certified management accountant bodies Mr Chaku comes with about 24 years of experience in teaching and various other industries in India and abroad over to Mr Thomas Chaku please sir good morning and uh, thank you bindu ma'am for the great words thank you anubhav sir uh, okay uh, so today's uh, topic is about the future ready accountant uh, so uh, i have a small presentation let me just share it yes sir right uh, the future ready accountant or future accountant uh, this is what actually our topic is today and uh, uh, first of all uh, let me just uh, tell you you know uh, like when obal sir was telling uh, historically uh, what an accountant does or what he was doing uh, as he said you know when 25 years before uh, i started the accounting and all uh, we were writing you know the documents the voices payment voices the receipt voices everything manually was written okay and it was almost everything was manual and uh, slowly slowly small small computer you know accounting software started coming and then slowly slowly we avoided uh, uh, that uh, manual writing but still uh, mostly it was manually written and mostly what an accountant was doing basically you know make these entries make voices and prepare some financial statements uh, budgets regular some reports we call uh, mis you know there is some mis uh, something we have to give on uh, daily basis something on weekly basis something on monthly quarterly basis and then uh, some ad hoc reports also this was actually was done by the accountants earlier so historically an accountant's duty was to uh, keep the records ready and uh, give some reports based on that and basically we were focusing on the internal information about the company you know those things were more and mostly financial figures we were giving and mostly again you know it was something like uh, we say it's kind of a post mortem exercise you know what have happened uh, we what are the when they spend something we just recording that and we are giving giving report on that it's basically focused on the past this was actually the earlier scenario historically 
now that the scenario has changed now if you look at today you know their accountant role is changed completely you know this is today what you know they got a more uh, strategic role is there you know providing you know they should help uh, the management for strategic planning and control and we also we use a lot of external information also you know it's not just internal within the company we used to get a lot of information from the externally and again we are focusing mostly on the future okay and uh, so this is actually scenario today a lot of changes have taken place you know and uh, as one of us said why the changes have taken place you know the many factors may mostly uh, most important one is the technology and many other things are there and today actually what accountant in fact you know uh, the changing role you know the changed role of accountant if you see uh, now earlier uh, we were focusing you know, on the most in the financial control uh, keeping the cost uh, at the limit the, we, we have to see that you know budget amount is not exceeded we have to see that you know uh, we have uh, when our cost is within the target all these things but now actually mostly more than the financial control become a business support an accountant actually is involved in giving the business support and that's why you know the accountants has become more like a generalist you know we earlier days you know if you see an accountant has got a separate cabin and he sits there and uh, he does all the all the documents comes to him and he gives all the reports this was actually mostly the duty of the accountant he was not involved in many other things so this is become you know more uh, generalist nowadays and if you see something we call it now is a become accountant is a hybrid accountant you know hybrid accountant means you know earlier days uh, you don't have to have much information knowledge on the commercial side business side operation side so now that uh, today you need to have a very thorough knowledge on the commercial as well as operation side too you cannot just stick to the accounting knowledge alone okay so you should need to have very good knowledge about the business what they're doing about the customers about the supplies about the products then only you'll be able to deliver uh, correct or deliver you know in a better way so that's why nowadays we call actually is an accountant is called a hybrid accountant not just a financial accountant okay he is he is involved in almost all the areas nowadays and uh, there is something called you know this a uh, new trend is called uh, triple bottom line reporting is actually a new trend a triple bottom line reporting you know an accountant has to give a report on not just the financial side of the company he, he has to see the economic that's the financial side of course and environmental and the social aspects also okay so how the impact on the society uh, of the because of the company's efforts all these he has to give a report on that and many companies nowadays publish you know social impacts environmental impacts you know carbon emissions and all they are giving uh, mean reports on that so an accountant has to give a report on on these uh, all areas and uh, uh, if you see as i told you you know like uh, why what has changed uh, uh, this uh, accountant's role first of all you know this as uh, the most important thing is technology that's a driving uh, force uh, for the change technology you know nowadays uh, uh, earlier days as i remember you know the first move was you know from the manual uh, uh, accounting you know the small small accounting packages small small software like a tally so many so many small small software came you know where they can you know do only the accounting function by using the software now later on you know they started becoming you know more uh, integrated uh, started things started coming like uh, uh, more erp systems where it's all integrated earlier you know many companies introduced only accounting software where, where it was not integrated to the inventory module there is no, it's not integrated to the payroll it is not integrated to the fixed assets nowadays it's all integrated erp system started coming and uh, and later on now you know that uh, uh, a lot of other changes are taking place you know like uh, the terms like you know cloud computing uh, the artificial intelligence big data data analytics uh, a lot of things coming up nowadays uh, and uh, earlier days you know we were giving the reports you know like mostly in the printed form printed reports you know mostly you know like i remember you know whenever i go to see my boss you know there's a file there a mis file where i take all the necessary printouts and uh, uh, then i go with that nowadays i don't go with uh, you know people don't go with uh, this kind of printouts 
everything is available in the desktop dashboard or smartphone everything data is available and then uh, early days uh, as i told you that uh, most of the people were depending on the accountant to keep get the reports now that uh, what is required for each manager it's available in the smartphone in the dashboard it will be there whatever so he does he have to depend on the accountant all alone because this is such a technology has changed uh, you know a lot of changes took place uh, but uh, as one of us said you know uh, even the technology has changed uh, and a lot of new reports coming up uh, still the accountants involvement is required in many of the in the report generations and uh, uh, it's the only thing the difference is like earlier days it was earlier days we are just giving the reports you know like uh, some standard format we are giving that nowadays it's not like that it is uh, something you know uh, more like uh, little bit advanced level of reporting started the advanced level you know they should help the management to take the decisions and we should also as i told you, you know uh, incorporate uh, some of the, our accounting uh, not only accounting knowledge or commercial and operational knowledge also into the, all the reports you know we, we early days we do, we we the accountant just give blindly give some reports uh, we don't look uh, into the what is the commercial impact of that what is the operational impact on that now we have to include on that and another one of the driving force was you know management structure uh, you know management structure is uh, completely changed nowadays you know uh, you see that uh, more delegations started happening it's not that uh, early days you know uh, most of the uh, even the biggest companies especially in india mostly india is actually known for the family based business you know mostly one man control and uh, almost you know uh, it was uh, no, no much delegation was not there now that all the companies delegation uh, started taking place so, and so they started doing independently most of the things they don't depend uh, solely on the accountants uh, to get the reports and the competition today is the competition competitive world you know we cannot be like uh, you know like in early days uh, we cannot just sit in the cabin and just give the reports we have to look at the external environment, especially the, the, the consumers, normally we say the customer is the king. The customer in you know, mostly all the reports today, basically, even, even though we are giving to the management, it should be customer uh, uh, as the focus. Yes. So this is actually, this competition has changed in this role. You know, all, all the reports when you give, we should always, always in an idea what the customer focus should be there. Okay, so these are some of the changes. And if you just, uh, suddenly scan at uh, some of the you know role of accountants if you see the uh, scan of the current job ads if you see not like uh, early days they were using you know uh, the accountants required with uh, who knows how to prepare the financial statement balance sheet you know who knows uh, up to the finalization this this was the wording earlier nowadays if you see most of the companies you know advertisements if you see if you scan through that you know like uh, their role, you can see there's change in the role. Uh, most of the uh, the uh, the reports inform strategic decision and the lead organizers risk management. If you see that the role is completely different, not like uh, just preparing the financial statements. That was all done uh, because most of the financial statements we don't have to prepare now because it, that system will take care of. Okay, once we feed the data, is that can be done by data entry operators. That is done uh, system takes care of is giving the reports okay so this the accountant's role is gone up to the little bit higher level now today's now uh, what actually uh, is required today as uh, you know aspiring students uh, aspiring candidates you know uh, now uh, what uh, is affect how, how it is affected you now whenever you go for a course or any program uh, the main thing what you have to see uh, is you know, are you going for a course which is the updated one? You know, most of the students, uh, especially I'm very, very you know critic of uh, the most of the Indian the, the university programs where you know people uh, uh, design a syllabus and next to 10, 15 years same syllabus and they don't see what the market requires. They don't see go to the employer and find out you know what exactly what the uh, demand in the employer's demand. They don't see that, but you should go for a course which is regularly updated, if possible, almost every year. Okay, and who takes uh, 
uh, the the current requirement of the employees those kind of uh, you know courses we need to go for and uh, and we are selecting you know those kind of courses you know a lot of uh, challenges will be coming because you know the the today's world you see a lot of uh, products are available you know you don't know which one to choose now uh, the only thing you have to see that you know uh, the one shortcut way i have to say is uh, you, when you go for a course you just ensure that your uh, the syllabus is completely updated all the latest information is there is updated you know uh, like uh, for example most of the professional bodies like acca or cma or most of the foreign universities you know they are updating regularly okay where actually that's what i said i was a little bit critical of indian universities where they don't update regularly even what was drafted 10 years before still they are all teaching the same thing okay so if you go with that uh, kind of knowledge you know normally uh, you won't be an acceptable or you you won't be an apt uh, candidate for the employer okay so this is the uh, my advice to the students okay choose a course that is most updated and flexible program all right so that's all uh, for me okay uh, thank you thank you very much vindu ma'am thank you venugopal sir thank you all the students and candidates thank you sir as you rightly said uh, it is like uh, from entries vouchers statements reports quarterly your monthly weekly and all these things it is basically uh, you know moving uh, from the past to the current and the future right um, i would say from the days of morning to you know to to a new rising i i as you rightly said you know earlier it was like they used to moan and um uh, deliberate over what has happened in the past but nowadays it is about what is going to happen currently and what is going to happen in the future uh, i think that is uh, a definitely a transition which is going to happen as far as accountants are concerned and um, from reactive to proactive so all these changes if they keep in mind i think that will be really helpful for them and um, as you rightly said from uh, uh, from a mere accountant to being a generalist and to being a hybrid accountant uh, and um, you know it needs a lot of uh, initiative uh, from the budding finance professionals too to you know go through these changes and um, about this triple bottom line reporting um, you were talking about economy environment and social and the question is um, uh, how good are a students or the current generation in trying to know about all these aspects uh, so maybe uh, it is a message to all the students who are listening to this uh, right um, so these are the things which are needed moving forward so understand until you are not updated in all these whatever is happening around uh, i you know just don't think that uh, your near academic knowledge is going to help you moving forward and um, And as you rightly said, the dependency definitely. Even Vijay sir was saying, dependency would come down. But then again, uh, when you are supposed to come up with one report which is leading to different aspects of decision making, you know, then the budding finance professionals should think that how important is it? Uh, what are the what are the things which have to be included in that report? Which means that they should have a holistic knowledge, holistic approach in you know looking at every aspect which is happening around. before they put in the figures and submit it and uh, you know you were saying customer focused and the power of delegation which means that should start and and then on in so coding everything you know power of delegation it is like they should when 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 you when you, when you have to delegate first of all you know they should have that knowledge in what is to be delegated which means they love to put in that extra effort and learning something new and uh, sir i have a question you were uh, the the slide which you showed about uh, the current jobs and then the wordings which are being used or rather the skills which are to be um, and now uh, every organization or every uh, education institute um, they go by the um, you know the academic uh, uh, you know related topics and things like that and then little bit of yes value added programs are there but they can how do we basically bridge this gap for example all the these skills are not being taught in most of the organization 
So as a student, from the student's point of view, how do they um, rather elevate themselves, uh, you know, or rather bridge this gap in uh, being future ready to match all these uh, skills, which are to be the parameters which are set by an organization? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, see, for, first of all, as I told you, uh, we should go for a program that is offering us, uh, you know, uh, with the latest updated syllabus, which uh, meets uh, the employer's requirements. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, you know, we should take our own some effort, you know, some the, the skill development. Yes. Skill development uh, in different areas is not that, you know, as I told you, mm -hmm. you need to have today, uh, not only the academic knowledge, mm -hmm. you need to have a business knowledge, commercial knowledge, a lot of other things, you know, if I just join a company, uh, you know, and uh, you know, they only the accounting. I don't know anything about their products, their industry. And naturally, I'm, I'm going to be a failure. I can't perform well. So you, the students should uh, try to uh, gain some other, uh, you know, non extra knowledge. And especially nowadays, you know, the online uh, many many courses being offered online. It's actually easy to do, you know, simultaneously to enrich our knowledge. There are many ways out there nowadays. So just, uh, I mean, just don't just focus only on the academic studies and getting a certificate. Uh, there was, you know, like, uh, because it was olden days, it was fine. But yes. nowadays it's not, uh, there is a saying, you know, there is a, not saying there is a magazine, you know, one CMA magazine, one article came, there was one waiting, I remember, you know, in the game of business, uh, an, an accountant uh, is not allowed to bowl, is not allowed to bat, is not allowed to umpire. Uh, he is uh, he's being just merely a scorekeeper. And uh, he is so frustrated that uh, he'll keep the scores in such a way that nobody understands the scores without his help. Okay. Right. <laughs> so this was, yeah. this was the olden stage. It was okay. Just do the academic knowledge and mm -hmm. do the figures. That's okay. But now that just account, the, the figures is not okay. You need to have some other knowledge too. That's nice. Yeah. Instead of just being a mere scorekeeper, an accountant should be an all-rounder, I guess, moving forward. Yeah. Fine, sir. Thank you very much for that. Uh, now, uh, there are a couple of questions which are being posted, uh, you know, receive, being received from audience. Uh, I have handpicked a few. And uh, the first question is to BG, sir. Um, Sir, uh, ISC, uh, Indian School of Commerce, um, the campus is actually known to impart uh, quality education of international standards. How different is a campus and the infrastructure uh, from a regular campus? Sir? How different? Uh... Uh, thank you, sir. Good question. Uh, so uh, the question is uh, with regards to the uh, infrastructure, which sure. is such to be a little, uh, what you call, uh, superior to others. So the infrastructure, I take it as uh, a physical infrastructure as well as intellectual infrastructure. That means the classrooms, uh, the facilities which the students utilize, as well as uh, the faculty members who are delivering the subject. Uh, Indian School of Commerce, physical infrastructure uh, is uh, a little bit of superior to others because it's a professional or, uh, institution, not a regular college. Professional uh, institution uh, differs from uh, a pro uh, normal uh, college. You can just a uh, normal college and IAM are different. MBA college in, uh, in any university in Kerala and IAM and Calicut or uh, somewhere else. The, uh, the, what you call uh, the infrastructure is uh, different. I don't mean one is uh, superior and other is uh, inferior. That uh, AM infrastructure, physical infrastructure is uh, good for, it's like engineer for professional studies. So, so we are doing, because you can see the medical college uh, uh, is different from our classes rooms in medical college, different from uh, our normal Maharaja's college was SH college there. So, so here, Indian School of Commerce, the physical infrastructure is uh, congenial to professional studies. Whether it is AC or not, that is uh, MTL, uh, there are other colleges also. We give that uh, environment where the students 
can learn professional subjects or topics then the intellectual infrastructure i mean so i don't know any such term is available or not even then so the teachers uh, including uh, uh, thomas sir who is the uh, program head they are professionally qualified they deliver the subject which they have mastered without doing a professional course at least to some extent the uh, the teachers may not be able to deliver uh, in the right spirit or manner i must know the subject as only i can make you understand so our teachers are uh, professionally qualified in their respective area it need not be everyone need not be uh, chartered accountants or ecc uh, program is a law papers the law paper will be taken by a law qualified uh, legally qualified person or qualified in legal subject accounting accounting uh, qualified person so this the professionals are actually delivering the subject these are uh, the superior uh, elements of the infrastructure in isc thank you so much sir intellectual infrastructure that's something new and really great to you know feel feel good to hear yeah uh, next question is to thomas sir sir so, uh, isc indian school of uh, commerce offers the most sought after programs in international business and finance uh, with nine paper exemptions um, please elaborate on the accreditations and the usp of the programs and how different are these programs when you compare with other finance programs please all right yeah thank you mr ma'am yes i said okay yeah. for a very long question about yeah, it's okay. of, yeah two three things together so uh, see uh, our programs uh, especially the we got be honors program and mba programs and all you know accredited by nine professional bodies so 11 professional bodies now Eleven okay. professional bodies, okay. and this, uh, and out of the the most important thing is ACCA. ACCA, the students get to nine papers exemption, and they need to write you know only four papers more to become an ACCA member, uh, an affiliate member. Okay, so this is uh, one of the advantage of uh, doing you know this program because the accreditation you know uh, will help you to get the both degree as well as ACCA together. even where there are some students who can qualify both within 3 years because you know once you start uh, you know registering you know uh, after 2 years you know that after fourth semester they will be they will become eligible to write the acca p level strategic level papers so by the uh, by the third year when they complete the degree program same time they can complete this acca too so they becomes you know in 3 years time they become a professional accountant as well as a degree holder this is actually one of the specialties and not only for acc i'm just talking about acc only so sema there is a sema the first two uh, levels uh, uh, there is uh, the operational level and uh, management level uh, it is accepted and they need to write only only management level case study as well as uh, strategic level only so it is uh, again for any program they can go for so so this is the one of the advantages uh, of this this course right sir fine now uh, next question is to vg uh, sir so um isdc the parent company uh, with its major operations in the uk how were the students of isc india benefited through the exchange program in the uk campus sir? Uh, in fact, as uh, you know, well, Lord uh, Thomas sir has uh, just apprised you, the programs that are delivered in ISC are unique programs. It is not being delivered uh, in any, any other institutions. This is exclusively for ISDC uh, in Kerala, and the same program is not being delivered in UWS UK. Uh, okay. So they have got uh, other programs. so formerly uh, there was some facility extended to students uh, to spend at least a semester or a year in the uk and complete uh, the course for uh, to gain some exposure okay uh, this facility uh, is not uh, we are not in a position to extend it now 
because the same program is not available in UW. This uh, international business and finance, PG and UG programs are available in our campus only. Uh, university campus or London, uh, UK campuses are delivering other courses. Okay. So the students, what they can do is, uh, they can go for other courses, master courses or some other courses after completing their UG students after BA honors, they can go for some other master programs in uh, UWS UK or any other university that we will extend oral assistance. There is no, but uh, to, to be very frank, there is no precise student exchange program uh, between uh, ISDC and uh, UWS. We are facilitating help and assistance to the students who want to go for higher studies or additional studies or uh, what you call uh, mm, uh, top up studies in UK that we will do. There is no precise st uh, student exchange program. Like many of the students have already gone, right, sir? Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. To pursue yeah. Their so higher they, can, they can go for other studies, alternate yeah. studies or higher studies. Thank you, sir. Um, to Thomas, sir. So um, we were talking about exemptions and things like that. Uh, when do these exemptions be affected for BA and MBA? Uh, would you please explain? Um, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, see, this uh, for the degree programs, mm -hmm. uh, once uh, their fourth semester is over, fourth okay. semester result is over, you know, they'll be getting conditional exemptions. Conditional exemptions means, you know, uh, they mean, in fact, they're eligible for full uh, exemptions only after completing the course. But conditional okay. exemptions means, you know, they can start writing the strategic level papers. So the third year itself, the students writing the strategic level papers. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's for BCom uh, for the BA programs and mm -hmm. for the MBA programs after first semester is over, okay. they'll be getting conditional exemption. They can start writing the exams for strategic level. So uh, both MBA as well as BA, the advantage is that you know they can complete within the course duration itself. The ACC also they can complete. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Vijay sir. Um... Uh, a professional program uh, sometimes need financial backup. Uh, what are the kind of loan facilities which are available for a student to pursue his program through ISC? Is there any sort of tie up with any professional finance? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, I understand that a few banks are extending uh, loan for SCCA studies. So some of our students have uh, uh, obtained loan for SCCA uh, from the State Bank of India or some other banks. Mm -hmm. uh, so, of course, nowadays, uh, many banks are reluctant to give education loan for uh, foreign university programs that we know. So, we have tied up with uh, uh, another agency. They will extend the full uh, uh, fee amount on free of cost. The cost will be borne by the organization. So students need not bear any interest or uh, other charges. Then okay. their uh, fee will be given as a loan. The only uh, difference is that they will uh, extend the loan in every year. First year's fee as a first year's loan, second year as second year's loan, it should be cleared before availing. The uh, first year uh, should be, first year fee should be, fee or loan should be cleared before availing the second year okay. loan. That's all. It's a, it's a, so we are helping the students to avail it. That's a wonderful news. Sir. Yeah, students, uh, you, you know, you should be really happy. Whoever is listening to this, thank you, sir, for that. Uh, Thomas, sir, uh, a question which often comes in, uh, you know, how do you compare Indian BCom program with uh, uh, the BA Honors program, which is run by ISC? Right. Yeah, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, so this is, um, uh, say, uh, this program, uh, actually we call it, you know, a BA Honors uh, program. You know, Honors program is a little bit higher level than the normal mm -hmm. programs. And Honors mm -hmm. level, actually, when, when we do with uh, some specialization. Mm -hmm. And here, this program, as I told you, this has got uh, accreditation, you know, nine papers exemptions from the ACCA, for example, and many other exemptions. Whereas BCom, if a student is doing, is getting an after completion of the BCom, that after just after completion of the BCom, is getting just four papers exemption from ACCA. Okay. And mm -hmm. by the rest of all the papers he has to write. 
okay that's one thing and another one advantage is that you know the uh, subjects what is taught uh, for the ba honors program is almost uh, same as acc program our syllabus you know uh, is actually aligned to the uh, acc and sema uh, you know so that you know the students those who study our ba, BA program they find it easy to clear you know the rest of the papers of acc and uh, and as i told you this is actually our syllabus is also most updated syllabus uh, is not outdated syllabus it's always updated syllabus which we can't see in most of the indian universities you can't see that most in the university you see the very outdated syllabus here is very updated uh, that will help you in future you know to get the job also easily and also in the learning here you know the international financial reporting standards and all you know all international exports will be there where uh, it will help you to get uh, jobs in mncs and big fours and all you know they prefer the people uh, those who have done the international accounting standards so these are the, some of the specialities of this program when you compare the bcom yeah i, I hope you. i answered the question yeah you did thank you sir vijay sir uh, said yes, sir. about the intellectual infrastructure um because to deliver a globally accredited program we need the faculty with global expertise which sir has given an intro uh, but uh, would you please add on uh, an, or rather introduce your faculty team uh, you know to the to the audience please um uh, uh, ma'am you mean a faculty no, sir, team no thomas sir thomas sir to yeah, thomas sir uh, it's for me okay yes sir okay, yeah, okay. okay. right right uh, okay As you see uh, uh one of the actually uh, the good thing about uh, you know our faculty team actually uh, the most of the faculties are either professionally qualified uh, uh, there are chartered accountants are there acc holders are there sema holders are there and uh, <coughs> and uh, there are some few faculties who are not uh, qualified uh, i mean uh, for acc and professional qualification but they have uh, with a rich experience in their particular field and uh, we got uh, faculties you know uh, not only in kochi campus here we got uh, faculties in bangalore campus and we got uh, uh, many other faculties all together we have around uh, uh, around 150 plus total faculties we have you know all over india so we will especially when you are giving the uh, master classes we take make use of all these faculties you know which is you would say almost 50% or more of the faculties are you know professionally qualified and not only professionally qualified many of them are experienced uh, in the industry too that is also one of the another advantage the students will be getting they will be getting you know a lot of industry exposure too from these faculties that's All right great. yeah so there is a question which is coming from one of the students will there be any discrimination between our degree and the usual bba or bms will it obstruct our opportunities when we go out in the external world uh you you mean uh, uh when they go to external world uh, can you just repeat the question what exactly uh, yeah i I'll, i'll just read it out for you will there be any discrimination between our degree and the usual bba or bms program will it obstruct our opportunities when we go out in the external world okay <laughs> so one thing uh, you have to understand uh, this is a pro <coughs> this is a program you know uws offered by uws university uh, university of west of scotland university it's actually one of the scotland's uh, it's a state universities uh, with the top rankings and uh, uh, but uh, in india you know one thing you have to remember you know when you uh, go for some of the government qualification government jobs and all uh, you need to have a course or degree which is you know uh, uh, affiliated to a ugc university grants commission or it's which approved by university ugc now this is actually uh, required you know if you're going for applying for a job in uh, government sector and all uh, this particular program you know what is offered by uws university is not uh, affiliated to university ugc so that kind of you know issues may be there if they are going to the uh, to search a jobs in india especially government sector but uh, in other private sector it is not affected if they are going abroad it is not affected 
is only you know if they're going for the government sector and related to those areas some effect may be there got it thank you thank you sir now viji sir um would you please show uh, you know throw more light on the uh, program certificate which is issued uh, after the course completion i mean the value the issuing authority etc please uh yes that uh, the ba honors or mba these are programs delivered in indian school of commerce or by isdc on behalf of university of the west of scotland only sure uh the certificate examination the valuation is uh, is done by the university through their uh, external examiners uh then the certification is done by the university that means the certificate as well as uh, the mark cards that are being delivered by the university directly and uh, we have uh isc or isdc has no role in the certification or uh, uh, assessment of the student that part of job lies with uh, the university uh to supplement that's uh, the answer is this thing supplement uh, you can you can uh, get the certificates uh certified by uh, certified in other countries suppose we go to the bank you can uh, get it validated or uh, get it uh, certified uh, in embassies okay. in india or even uh, i think there are one or two instances uh, where uh, we have sent it to roots or somewhere what i don't know but uh, agency yes sir. for uh, for uh, what is it is certification yeah what the you call it yeah. eh? the the, the norca roots thing yeah yeah, yeah right so right. sir what is it uh, how you certify that uh, noting uh, yeah it's a, yeah certification certification, certification. Uh, and... that can be done so uh, the certificate in uh, i got international value because of course it's a, a certificate a degree certificate or degree uh, awarded by a renowned uh, university in west of Scot uh, scotland scottish university so uh, definitely suppose you want to go for some other uh, qualifications in india it should be uh, what you call uh, equated with any other indian university programs by uh, association of indian universities uh, this is this i complement uh, with the answer given by thomas sir in another question uh, this these programs this uh, ug program of uh, ba honors or pg program of mba the elevated programs as a professional programs it is not meant for students to uh, play for uh, psc exams no it is not like that so they are uh, they after completing this thing they have to take up one or two papers of four three whatever it may acca become a chartered accountant become a professional don't think that it's a normal degree acquired to apply for psc as for village man's post or something like that not like that if anybody thinks that it is a degree normal degree which will empower them to apply for kerala psc to write for uh, uh some some position it is not congenial to them this those students who require or want to become professional accountants they can take the route of uh, ba honors or mba get the degree of the university of west of scotland and elevate themselves or enhance themselves as a acca or caama qualified professional international accountant at this don't uh, uh, feel that they, they can uh, complete the ba and go for uh, some other psc test no it is not meant for that thank you thank you sir uh, thomas sir a question it's like what is the average pass percentage of the students completing uh, the program yeah uh, here actually from the past history we can say from the the batches uh, you know what we have taught so far Uh, almost ninety-five uh, percent of students are passing out, uh, uh, but some of them, of course, uh, you know, the degree program they got uh, three each paper got three attempts are there. Some of them, you know, they even they lose in first attempt they cleared the second or third attempt, 
but uh, overall you see 95 percent of students are passing out uh, without much difficulties and uh, even if a student uh, uh, fails in the first attempt we give actually extra classes for them extra courses for them and we will make them you know uh, capable to write the second reset exams so mostly that part the students have to don't have to worry mostly the 95 percent students are passing out that's a past history right sir. there is a question which is coming from one of the attendees uh, what are the job opportunities after taking a masters in uk along with completing acca yeah uh, job opportunity along with the acc and masters uh, yeah, this yeah. is actually yeah now you see there are <coughs> i'm sorry plenty of job opportunities available even uh, if even uh, if you see that the acc they got a website itself there's a careers option if you look at uh, just to run uh, around 2 3 weeks before i just gone through that there are plenty of jobs you know is available and they go for you know if you are uh, suppose if you have qualified uh, if you passed out acca okay and if you got a membership even affiliate membership also not even full member affiliate membership you know then you are considered as a, you know your you can registered you can registered student you know for the jobs and you can apply even for the uk jobs even this actually many students uh, are not aware even for the uk jobs you know even though you are not a visa holder there you can apply from here you know from uh, because you know if you have acc qualified and if you have any uk certification is there it is it is you know recognized there you know so you can apply from there in many of the uh, job sites you know uh, even this so this one time even acca people also they clarified this this particular point uh, many of the job sites you know there some uk jobs is coming you know the acca membership uh, will be treated as a uk registration so you can mention that you can even apply for that And so, so you, you have to. The, I think there is uh, there is not. I mean, uh, I don't see any of the ACC holders were sitting idle. Uh, maybe for initially two three months they might be uh, struggling to get the jobs because many people you know are a little bit reluctant to take the freshers. Yeah, right. But uh, I don't think uh, you know after three months or six months they are sitting idle. Uh, I think there's uh, there are plenty of jobs available. I think there's not Even much uh, need to worry about that. This, uh, EY webinar, they were saying for the affiliated students. they run a special program right a scholarship program wherein they ro rope them in as interns and then six months time they uh, you know take them into regular roles so yeah thank you sir for that uh, bg sir um, um, a very important uh, you know and i i think uh, uh, a question which uh, which is uh, a must for the current scenario we're going through you know the future is going to be on hybrid operating model you know which brings together the best of connections collaborations and culture um what is your view on the hybrid teaching model and how effective is it in a learning platform good thing uh, i will give my uh, views on that sir it will be yeah. supplemented by thomas sir because he is the more competent person to uh, sure. give an answer on this right because he is a, he is a season teacher right sir uh, hybrid uh, hybrid method of teaching or platform of teaching has got its pros and cons it's a good thing suppose uh, any 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 student or any batch of any group of students they are unable to travel and uh, reach the colleges for certain uh, days or duration so they can uh, assignment and uh, sit their home or in their residence assignment uh, Uh, along with the students who attend the class can uh, get or uh, get the learning directly from the teacher it's a good thing but uh, the uh, two things i foresee is that one is it is uh, dependent on the communication facilities if any snag is there there will be uh, uh, what you call a lapse that we have the, the student has to uh, recoup or get it back afterwards so there will be a gap second thing uh, i don't know whether it is that uh, my notion is correct or not i don't know a set of students remain in the class a set of students uh, scatters and is that they uh, stay 
uh, in their homes or other places. If the mindset, if the intellectual or, uh, or level of all the students are one and the same, it's good. Otherwise, if the level of their intellect or their understanding power is differs or the understanding differs, definitely uh, uh, there will be uh, some students who say someone is an educate or so I take an example. Uh, so he cannot suppose he cannot cope up with the teaching of the teacher. He has to uh, what you call ask for uh, repetition or the student who remain in the class. If he is not following uh, the classes, then he will ask uh, the teacher, sir, uh, repeat, repeat, or something like that. Then the others has to wait for that. Right. So suppose I understand everything uh, when the teacher delivered to me. If others, one or two persons are not uh, understanding it, suppose they ask, the, ask for repetition of the thing, I have to uh, remain yeah. idle for that time because it is a, it's a what you call intellectual her, hurdle or hurt to me. This is uh, my, my outlook. I don't know whether it is correct or not. Otherwise, it is good. Another thing, for a student, because we have been in uh, colleges and universities for several years now, it is better to be in the college, better to be in the campus, because uh, we are not uh, going to university or the institutions, not just for learning something. So we have to uh, broaden our outlook. We have to broaden our, uh, what you call, tolerance level. We have to mingle with others. So our, uh, we have to find out what is the, uh, cultural difference in me from others. How I differ or how I should, uh, 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 what do you call, uh, improve, something like that. So we have, have to compare me with others, not in the public. Inside me, I have to come to so This is the good thing in him. I have to inculcate that in me. That is a social life. So for a social life, it is better to be in the campus at least for a major portion of the course period. This is my opinion. Sir, Thomas, sir, you can compliment yeah. it. Yes, sir. Yeah, the same thing, the same uh, opinion I also do have, they should be complemented by offline as well as online. Uh, nowadays, you know, there's a uh, time, you know, people are going for many online courses are coming up, you know, right. uh, for example, Jane Online. It's all uh, in India, it's, it's coming new online programs where, uh, even the faculty is not even teaching. I mean, all system will take care of. So, you know, right. you got a set of modules mm -hmm. and you've completed that. You got test in the system itself. It's all takes, I mean, even uh, teacher, you know, live interaction all the time may not be there. Uh, but uh, it's also I mean, one of the, because of technology is changing. But even, uh, even in the online platforms, you know, we uh, need to have this kind of offline, you know, because I see, you know, once I write, you said, you know, uh, one person is uh, learning, you know, coming to college or institute, you know, not just for just uh, not the academics. academics. Yeah, yeah, right. they, yeah, a lot of other social things are there, you know, so cultural events, many things like that, you know, that will happen only when an offline we are meeting. Online, of course, uh, nowadays major things are happening nowadays. Uh, I'm, I'm not talking about, uh, you know, this kind of, I mean, through the Zoom or, uh, yeah. No, not like that, you know, no, no full, uh, like US and all is very common, you know, full online course is very common. I mean, not just during the Corona time, even before that, it was very common. Many universities are there and it's uh, many of these uh, courses are equally accredited. But uh, once it is supplemented, you know, by these offline modes, uh, you know, I mean, once in a while, I think it's just great. Uh, that's my feel on that. Sure, right, sir. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Now, um, uh, sir, uh, Thomas, sir, from your side, um, we were talking about, uh, uh, you know, trying to learn something more value added programs and things like that. Um, is there any suggestion from your side on the add on courses which a student can take um, along with his regular program to enrich his knowledge in finance? Suggestion from your side? Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, uh, the students actually uh, definitely should take some add-on courses, you know. Nowadays, uh, online also, many plenty of courses are available. For example, uh, a student uh, doing the Be Honest program, 
for the MBA program. They can go for some computer course, some uh, computer accounting, so some ERP system. They can learn about that, or they can learn about you know something related to you know some particular topic. You know, I when I say this one, uh, you know, I remember you know one incident. Uh, you know, when I was working in a company, it was uh, some electrical you know switch gear manufacturers. That company, when I worked, uh, we we wanted uh, one. Uh, accounting you know one accountant we, we wanted you know we got a lot of cvs and in that cvs you know uh, i uh, mean uh, shortlist some people you know uh, the, the the thing what i have seen uh, there are two persons you know had uh, some electrical background and two persons had very good computer knowledge so so i okay, felt so, you know yeah, these right. students you know it's good uh, the accounting degree plus this uh, computer knowledge or this uh, this particular you know or the, it was electrical knowledge was for that industry okay so i prefer those kind of candidates it is something like that you know so always you know do something i don't always is always good especially you now uh, without a computer knowledge you know uh, they can't work uh, anywhere so they should be uh, they should be good in uh, even all the office they should be good in you know, the basic softwares the mini ERP software, they, they even they don't have to learn all the ERPs, you know, it's not necessary. At least some basic knowledge is required. Very true. Yesterday I went to the dentist and then she said, uh, you know, uh, my uh, subordinate is going to take care of you today because I've enrolled myself for a law program. Then I was just uh, asking her, you're a dentist and then why? She said she has enrolled herself for a medical law program. And then she said, nowadays clients are not that easy. You know, so likewise, each and every one, they are trying to learn something on their own too. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. Um, so one question, one last question and to both of you it's like uh, students uh, whatever said and done they go through a lot of stress and uh, a lot of changes which are happening and the phase which they are going through is really difficult for them um, tackling uh, you know, the stress and uh, you know, the online learning and you know it is definitely not easy so uh, you know um, oh, the suggestion or rather advice uh, from both of you to the students um, you know, how they need to tackle, how can they tackle this phase which they are going through, um, you know, how, how do they take care of your learning and career and things like that moving forward, please. Viji, sir. Uh, aspirants of accounting profession, my advice is that the future is bright. There is no uh, room for any apprehension. Uh, tomorrow, yesterday was ours, today is ours, tomorrow will be ours. Yes, yes, yes. So the accounting professionals will have their uh, uh, slot uh, in the corporate level management all through. If it is uh, today it is there, tomorrow will definitely it will be there. Nobody can do away with finance professionals in their management system. Because uh, we, the accounting professionals or finance professionals, they are uh, actually managing the scarce uh, resources uh, of uh, the entire uh, operating system of the organization. That is money, capital. Other thing, uh, everything depends on what the investors get out of their investment in the company. Then only, so they will make more investments. Then only the shares, share price will go on. So we, it is the account of the finance professionals uh, responsibility to find out that the earnings per share of the company goes up by cutting short the cost. Definitely we cannot, uh, or the professionals cannot increase the price. So how the uh, cost is to be curtailed is to be find, found out by uh, finance professionals. That is their job. That is uh, in future, that would be their primary uh, responsibility, not uh, putting figures in somewhere. So uh, it is uh, the part of management responsibility uh, bestowed on accountants or accounting professionals. So the only for that, what the students must learn is that they should have 
the required skill in data and analysis. So analytics should be a part of as Thomas Sir said, they can have add-on courses in diploma in uh, data analysis. Many things are there. So there are uh, institutions which give certificates, uh, uh, certificate programs in data analysis or financial analysis. So analysis, there should be there should be some sort of technical knowledge for accountants in data analysis. So analytics is a is a subject of tomorrow. So better to have an additional qualification in data analysis for becoming what you call a elevated uh, uh, accountant professional or account finance professional in tomorrow's corporate world. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Thomas, sir? Uh, yeah, uh, as Honorable Sir said, uh, you know, one thing uh, we can be sure, you know, uh, once you qualify as an accountant, you know, you won't be jobless uh, yeah. because uh, not like other profession, like you see today, a lot of engineers are jobless, you know, but accounting profession, and maybe for the, uh, even if you even may not be getting all the people may not be getting the same salary, but uh, you won't be jobless and you'll get a job uh, easy for the accountant, even the future also, the same thing is going to continue. But uh, as he said, but we need to have, you know, not just a degree program, just a degree, you need to have some add-on program also. So for that, uh, set your goals and work for it. That's only the advice for the students, set your goals and work for it. What is the motivation, uh, sir? What uh, do you think is the motivation? Uh, the motivation is, you know, there is something called we, uh, you know, there is something called, uh, you know, uh, teach uh, something called three E's, we say three E's, okay, three E's in the management accounting scenario, we say economy, efficiency, effectiveness, okay, right. there is a go for a program that is economically is good, right, the financial side, and uh, which is efficient program, the syllabus is good, faculty is good, the infrastructure is good, okay, and effective, okay, effective. The the end result, what you're going to get, you're you finally you're employed, okay, where you can get a placement, okay. If I study here, if I complete this course, I'll get a placement. So there's three E's: economy, efficiency, effectiveness. This kind of programs you go for, and definitely you'll be getting the job. Don't worry about the jobs. As I told earlier, you know, I have not seen uh, you know much of uh, the ACC holders are wandering for jobs. Uh, first, of course, three to six months, okay, they're uh, looking for the jobs. Afterwards, uh, almost everyone I know, they're settled. All right, yeah, that's all. That's quite was. motivating, yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Now it's time for the panelists' feedback. Viji, sir. Uh, the whole program has uh, gone well. So only only lacuna I feel is that uh, we could not get any uh, or interactive session with uh, students. students. So it's yes. not essential even then. Uh, their viewpoint uh, would have been uh, a, a tool for assessing the whole uh, yeah. uh, program. Anyway, this has uh, been organized well by Bindu uh, Ma'am. Uh, this has, has been. Uh, effectively addressed by uh, Thomas Sako sir. Thank you for uh, both you and all participants. Uh, I thank you because uh, uh, if you derive some benefit out of this, it's not be very, very, uh, what you call vast, anything. Uh, it's a satisfaction for the people. And I, I uh, wish all other participants a very, very bright future even if they are uh, with us or with any other organization. Thank you. Thank you, Bindu Ma'am. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, sir. And we know that we you are actually taking care of a lot of verticals. And thank you so very much for spending your time with us. It's almost an hour and a half. And uh, right from the start till the end, you are uh, you know with us answering almost you know, a lot of questions we are posted on things like that. Thank you so very much for that, sir. Over to Thomas, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Ma'am. So it was actually as Robert said, it was well organized. I hope uh, all the participants uh, benefited, and uh, uh, is the participants, you know, especially if anyone, any prospective, you know, uh, students who plan to go for some 
careers to make some careers in accounting and finance i hope it would have been helpful for them and uh, uh, if at all uh, if you need uh, any further uh, you know details or queries of course bindu mam is there you can always contact right so yes. thank you very much uh, for giving an opportunity uh, to give uh, uh, such a talk okay so thank you very much everyone thank you panelist uh, mr venugopal v menon and mr thomas chakku for having contributed your insights on the topic addressing the queries raised with expertise thank you isc isdc team of kochi trivandrum and bangalore for all the support thank you parents and all the participants wish you all a very wonderful weekend stay safe thank you thank you sir. thank you thank you sir.